Hi there, my name is Bill Schwab and I'd like to welcome you back to the Northlight Photographic Workshops. Uh, today it's time to get on to part four in the series that I've been doing on wet plate photography. Um, I know that up till now I've just been instructing you how to mix the different chemicals that we need during the process and you can see those videos still up here right now, uh, part one, two and three. Today, part four, we're actually going to put all of those chemicals to use. We're going to pour a plate and make a photograph. So it's going to be a fun day. No more sitting in front of uh, beakers uh, mixing chemistry. Now, the thing that we're going to be doing is going back into the darkroom once I set it up, and we are going to pour a plate. Now, that plate can be poured under white light, and that will be using the collodion that we've mixed. Now, I'll be pouring that plate out. I'll be getting it around all the corners, and then I'll be pouring it off into the pour bottle, uh, the uh, pour off bottle. And then what I'll be doing is taking that plate and putting it into the tank of silver nitrate that we mixed up. Now, once that tank, once that is sensitized in the silver nitrate, it's light sensitive, and it has to come out under red light or in total darkness. So once that's done, we're going to bring that into this plate holder. Now, the way that we do that is the plate holder opens up, the plate goes in there face down. This goes on as a backing plate, and then the back is closed. Then we take the, bring it outside here to the camera. We'll put it in the camera, pull the dark slide, make our exposure, put the dark slide back in, and then we're gonna take that plate back into the dark room under red light, and we're gonna develop it by hand with the developer we mixed. Now, uh, with all that said, it's time to get onto some fun, so let's get into the dark room and get to it. Okay, so now I've got the darkroom all set up and ready to go. And what we've got here is the silver nitrate tank. And we've put in, I've put in there the silver nitrate that we mixed the other day. And it's ready to go. Um, over here is the collodion we mixed the other day, along with some that I'd already had on hand. So this is going to be my, uh, my bottle that I use. This is going to be the pour-off bottle. Uh, mixing them together is not going to be any problem. And this is the holder that I was showing you before. And I'm going to set that up over here getting ready for the plate. So what I'm going to do here now is get the plate ready to go. I've got some pre-cut here and I'm going to show you about the plates and pre-cutting them in, a, in another edition here. But for now, uh, you can see the links in the other videos and in this one for Main Trophy Supply, which is where I buy this stuff. All you got to do is call them up and they know about us. They know who we are. I think that we're some of the best customers that wet platers are. So as you can see, there's a plastic coating on here. And that plastic coating you pick up and peel back. And after it's peeled off, you never touch the surface again because it's already pre-cleaned. You don't have to do any polishing or anything like that. So just discard of the coating. I like to pour like this in a waiter tray style. And uh, it's a good way to go because you can kind of control your plate. Now what I want to do is keep it at a level uh, angle here and I'm going to pour the collodion on here. And then I'm going to slowly gently rock it to one corner, to another corner, to another corner, and then off into the pour off bottle. So let me get my bottles ready here. I'm going to take off the, uh, the lids. Now I leave them capped because the ether and the collodion evaporates very quickly and it's quite aromatic. and. Uh, I just like to keep them coated, covered as much as possible. So here we go. Now, I'm going to use the newer one that we mixed the other day. Now, as you can see, I keep the plate level. I pour out a fair size, covering a little bit more than half the plate. I put down my bottle, and I rock it to the one corner. As you can see, there's a little bit of waste, so I like to have some paper towel under me, that kind of thing. I've gone to the other co corner, and now I'm ready with my final corner, and I pick up my pour off bottle and in it goes. I rock it back and forth like this. And what this does is it helps to level out the collodion on the surface of the plate. So there aren't any ridges or anything and lets off the excess drain into the bottle. Now this can be used again after we filter it. So I set that off to the side. I like to put the caps back on so that I'm not getting uh, gassed out by the ether. I keep the drip edge down so that it doesn't flow back on itself. And I put that on a piece of paper towel and I dip that out onto the one end and then I take the other drip edge. I like to use several paper, to paper towels so it makes a bit of a, a cushion so that it kind of envelops the edge of the plate and helps take off or absorb the excess um, collodion. 
Now, now the plate is kind of skinned over and it's starting to dry already. It skins over um, and if I touch the corner of it and it doesn't fill back in on itself, it's ready to go. So then I open up the silver nitrate tank. And I'm very careful not to get any silver nitrate on my hands at this point. I'll go to gloves after this one. I close that up and I set the timer for three minutes. Now after that, we'll take this plate out of here and we'll put it into the plate holder, but we'll have to do that under red light. So we're going to go dark now. Okay, so our time is up and we're ready to go. I have my plate holder ready to go over here and it's time to take the plate out of the silver nitrate. Now I rock it back and keep it leaning back and much like it when I put the collodion on, I like to keep the drip edge down, let it all run off into the tank and now I put it down and I let it drain off into the paper towel. And while it's doing that, I like to wipe the back off because I don't want any excess silver nitrate in my camera for obvious reasons. And there you can see it's kind of a nice smoky color. It's all ready to go. So we'll put it back here into the film holder and put the restraining back on it, close it up and we're ready to go. Okay. So now that we've got the plate poured and in the uh, plate holder, it's time to come out here and make sure that we have our shot set up correctly. Now, normally I set up these shots before I get the plate poured, um, but this is the way it goes today. So what I'm doing is I'm looking in here and I can see my scene and I'm just going to focus it as best I can. And uh, it's kind of a classic down the road sort of shot. Okay, now that I've got the shot set up, it's time to put our plate holder in. Let me close my lens. And I'll cock the shutter, get ready to go. This is the, uh, the plate side, this is the exposure side. I put that into the camera, pull out my dark slide, then I'll make my exposure. 1001, 1002, 1003. Now I went with a 10 second exposure based upon my best guess. Now, as I was saying before in the series, Collodion has an ISO of about one. So you can always use your light meter and kind of get a sense of that. But right now I'm shooting with my lens wide open. It's getting a little darker here into the woods now because there's not so much bright sun shining down into the spots. And therefore I'm giving it a little bit of a longer exposure. Um, it's a best guess, but we'll see how it goes. So time to put the dark slide back in. Take it out of the camera and head back into the dark room. Come on. Okay, so now we've got our exposure made. It's time to process the plate. So once again, I open up the plate holder. I get my plate out. It's ready to be developed. Develop. What I like to do is get a bit of a, an amount of water in the tray and that will stop our development after we've done the development that will stop the action of the developer. So now I've got some of the uh, developer that we've mixed. Uh, I poured it out into a, a beaker here and I'm ready to develop. So here we go. I'm going to pour it on the edge of the plate and then I rock it over the plate and I rock it around and I watch and I'm starting to see the image come up. It's kind of dim yet. So I might've made this an underexposure. We'll see. I'm kind of pushing the developer a little bit farther than I usually like to, but this is a restraining developer, so we may be okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see the image coming up there, but I think it's time to drop it in. I don't think I'm going to get much more out of it. So there we go. Use a little extra water as long as I'm not in a dark box or in my trailer. I've got plenty of water here in the dark room to use, so I like to rinse it. And once you see that the water is not beating up on the surface anymore, you know that the plate is ready to, uh, to be go under white light and to be fixed. So there we go. We pour that off, set that down. It's time to get the fixer and I'll go to white light for that. I'm going to turn on my white light over here and it might not be enough for you to see, but it should. 
I have the fix. And I'm once again going to pour it on the edge of the tray here and just let it start doing its duty. Now, as you can see, the photograph is starting to reverse a little bit. You should be starting to see a positive image. Yeah. And as I suspected, it's a little bit fogged. That's because I developed too long. Um, I underexposed it and I tried to develop it too far. So, this is a learning plate. Uh, it's pretty much fixed as much as it will be right now. What I do then is I pour the fixer back off. Oops. Mix. God, we mixed a lot of it. Pour that back off. Put some water in the tray. And for now, I'm going to let that plate sit there and I'm going to pour another one and we're going to try another exposure. Okay, so now we've got our next plate ready to go here. Sorry about that, but that's what happens. You know, it's a hit or miss kind of a deal, and now we know that our exposure needs to be a little bit longer. Uh, the fact of the matter is, as you could see in the dark room, I had to overdevelop that plate, and even though I was using a restraining developer, it still fogged it and kind of burned it a little bit. So we're going to try 20-second 20 expo exposure this time. Let's go for it. Cock the shutter. Thousand one, thousand two, twenty. As you can see, I don't use a stopwatch because I don't have enough hands. I, I, I count in the same method every time, so it kind of works just as well. However, if you want to be more precise, have yourself a top stopwatch that you can hang around your neck or something like that. So we're ready to go develop another one. Let's try it. Come on. Okay, so we're back in the dark room and we've got to take the last plate out of the water and I have my water bath ready to go here. So uh, now I'm going to get my developer ready to pour on, and here we go. Pour it down the edge, and then I just keep that rocking around and rocking around. Make sure that you keep the surface covered with the developer. And see, now I start seeing my image coming in. It's coming in much better than it was before. Um, yeah, this is a lot better exposure, I can tell. It's almost ready to go in. All right. So now I'm stopping the action of the developer. And what you do is you look at the plate to see the beading on the plate. It looks like uh, water on a waxed car. And when it's beading up like that, it's not ready. The action of the developer is not stopped yet. You keep looking for that. Dump out some, put in some new water here. Dump that. Okay, now it's time for the fix. Now your image will start to reverse out. You can see it's starting to come in. Ah, it's looking a lot better than last exposure. This is great. Okay, just about it. Turn, turn on the white light. Fantastic. There, hopefully you can see that. It's a very nice, nice, rich image. Yeah, okay, back in the water. We're going to leave that go for a while. So there you go. You've made your first plate, um, actually your first couple of plates. I'm sorry it took a couple of iterations before we got it right, but that's the way this process is. Kind of be a moving target, you know, as you're losing light you have to change exposures and it's just the way it goes usually. Um, so, uh, but I think we did pretty good. Uh, it looks really nice. I'll get it varnished up and before this video is published, I'll have an image of it in the video so that you can see what it looks like. Um, I hope you learned some things on this one. Um, I'll be doing more shooting videos with the, uh, with the camera in the wet plate, but I won't go into such detail on each of those. They'll be a little bit more fun and we'll get maybe a little bit more into troubleshooting. But for now, it was good that you ran into a little bit of trouble with me on this one because you were able to see what happens when you over, uh, overdevelop and underexpose. Um, and the, the resulting fogging of the plate. So anyway, with that, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, 
it really does pay to see somebody else working with the process before you solo and go on your own. So I'm hoping that you can all do that now. Um, we have one more important part, part five left of this series, and that's gonna be on varnishing these plates. Now I'll get to that soon, um, but until then, we've made our first plate and you're ready to go. You've seen how to use all the chemistry that we've mixed up over the first uh, three parts of the video series. And uh, we've put them all together today and you've made a plate. So anyway, with that, I hope you liked it. If you did, maybe give me a thumbs up below. Uh, maybe subscribe down there if you uh, haven't already. And if you perhaps know a friend that's into this process or would like to get into this process, I'd really appreciate it if you, tell, if you would tell them about this because I'm hoping to help a lot of people get started. Uh, and anyway, with that, until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.